From the beginning of the War of 1812, British ships control the waters of Chesapeake Bay. But because Britain was also fighting France, most of its troops were in Europe, so it couldn't mount an invasion. That changed in 1814, when Britain and her allies defeated Napoleon and imprisoned him on Elba, allowing Britain to shift both ships and men to the U.S. war. British troops in Canada planned to invade New York, but needed a diversion to the south. That diversion was to be an attack on the American capital, Washington, D.C. A massive British fleet assembled at Tangier Island in the Chesapeake. The bay was defended by the Chesapeake Flotilla, a collection of American barges and gunboats under command of Captain Joshua Barney. Though vastly outnumbered, these men were determined to mount a resistance. In August 1814, the British advanced up the Patuxent River forcing Barney to retreat ahead of them. At Upper Marlboro, Maryland, British forces gathered and began their march on Washington by way of Bladensburg. Barney's sailors, with artillery from the Washington Arsenal, now Fort Leslie McNair, took up positions at Bladensburg along with units of the Army and militia. Though units around them fled in the face of the withering British assault, Barney's men fought bravely and his guns took a heavy toll on the advancing British troops. The British eventually captured Barney, but immediately paroled him, a huge sign of respect for his valiant stand. Having overcome all resistance, the British next advanced on Washington, forcing President Madison and other government officials to leave the capital. The British planned to burn government buildings, but promised to spare private property as long as its owners were peaceful. Some of Barney's men occupied the Sewell Belmont House in the city, firing on the advancing British troops, killing the British commanding general's horse. The British torched the house as well as the White House, Capitol, and other government buildings. Dolly Madison, following instructions from the president, gathered up as many valuables as she could. Paul Jennings, President Madison's enslaved manservant, along with others, save the Gilbert Stuart painting of George Washington, today considered a national treasure. Word of Barney's brave stand at Bladensburg quickly traveled to Baltimore, inspiring the defenders of that key port to hold out against the September British assault. As many as 900 U.S. naval officers and sailors, including over 200 from Barney's flotilla, deployed to defend the city, both aboard ship and on land. Citizens of Baltimore were also instrumental in setting up the city's defenses. Many of the city's defenders took up positions in Fort McHenry, where they traded artillery fire with the British warships, lighting up the night sky with the rocket's red glare. The Americans' determined resistance, inspired by Barney's men, proved to be inspiration for a civilian, attorney Francis Scott Key who witnessed the bombardment aboard the deck of a British ship, where he had gone to conduct legal business. Moved by the sight of his country's flag at dawn fluttering over the fort, Key jotted down the words to a song that, in 1931, would become America's national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. By December 1814, American and British negotiators in Ghent, Belgium, were in the final stages of treaty terms to end the War of 1812. But before the treaty was finalized, the British planned to make one last thrust from the Gulf of Mexico, capturing New Orleans and giving the British control of the Mississippi Valley. Time, however, proved to be Britain's enemy and America's ally. A huge British fleet under command of Sir Alexander Cochrane was headed for the Gulf, but first waited in the Caribbean for a smaller British squadron which was delayed by its engagement with the American privateer General Armstrong in the Azores. Time lost? Three days. When Cochrane's fleet and 8,000-man invasion force finally approached from the east of Lake Bourne, an American flotilla consisting of five gunboats under command of Lieutenant Thomas F. Catsby Jones stood in his way. After a brief battle, Cochrane defeated Jones' force navigated Lake Bourne and landed invasion troops who made camp just nine miles downriver from New Orleans. But in preparing for and fighting this battle, the British lost another two days. 
Major General Andrew Jackson, who at first thought the attack would come at Pensacola, Florida, had to rush his troops to New Orleans. When he heard that the enemy had advanced so close to the city, he ordered an attack on the British position. On the night of December 23rd, an American force of about 2,000 men approached the unsuspecting British troops at their camp near the Mississippi River. In the river, the schooner Carolina, under command of Commodore Daniel Patterson, opened fire, throwing the camp into chaos. Shortly thereafter, Jackson's men opened fire and engaged the British in a bloody encounter before they were pushed back to Rodriguez Canal outside the city of New Orleans, next to Chalmette Plantation. The British suffered 275 casualties, the Americans 215. While the British waited for their entire force to arrive, Andrew Jackson's men dug in their position, creating earthworks along Rodriguez Canal. On January 8th, the British began their attack under darkness and a heavy fog. But as they approached Jackson's line, the fog lifted, exposing their ranks to heavy artillery fire. Meanwhile, a British regiment crossed the Mississippi to storm naval batteries manned by militia and turn the guns on Jackson's line. But again, a delay worked against the British. The regiment, running behind schedule, captured the American battery but was ordered to withdraw because the main attack on the other side of the river had stalled. The exposed British soldiers took heavy casualties from the Americans and eventually retreated. Jackson's troops were a collection of men that ranged from free black and Native American troops to Kentucky militia to Navy gunners and U.S. Marines who bravely held their position. The failure to take New Orleans was a shocking defeat for the world's mightiest army. British losses from December 23rd to January 8th totaled 2,450 killed, wounded, missing, and captured. Similar American losses totaled 350 men. The victory in the Battle of New Orleans solidified the contributions of the sea services to national defense and made Andrew Jackson an American hero.